Hello. Today I'm going to be creating a wildflower meadow for bees, butterflies and other pollinating insects in the wildlife corner of my garden. And it's going to cover this whole expanse to my right, which you can see is currently covered in weed fabric and gravel. Before I get started on that, let me set the scene. If you've been watching my videos lately, you'll know that I've already just created a wildlife log pile and wildlife hibernaculum just behind it. To my left are some buddleias, the butterfly bush, and I prune those in the spring so soon they'll have six to eight feet of new growth which is covered in butterfly friendly blossoms. There's going to be a very large wildlife pond here. I've already marked it out with a hose pipe and that's going to incorporate a bog garden. And the spoil, the soil that I dig out to create the pond is going to create a large Hugo culture mound to my right just behind the camera. And there's going to be a path of stepping stones all the way around the back of both mounds made out of these slabs. But they're not just going to be stepping stones, they're going to be stepping stones with a difference because each one is going to be raised up on blocks which will create another little environment for wildlife because it can crawl underneath and hide in safety and possibly hibernate in the winter time. And these stepping stones will mean that I'll be able to get up close and personal with any wildlife that moves in without disturbing it and also be able to share videos of it with you on my channel. So the first thing I need to do today is remove all this gravel. I bet there's a ton of it. And I'm going to retain that because that's going to create the beach for the wildlife pond. You probably already know if you're having a wildlife pond, it's important that there's at least one part of it has a gradual sloping edge so that any mammals that inadvertently find themselves in the water can crawl out to the side. Now, I don't expect you to sit and watch me move a ton and a half of gravel, so I'll probably give you about 10 seconds of that in fast forward. And I'll see you in a moment when I talk about the wildflower seeds and the stepping stones. So there you go, a couple of hours hard work, a good workout, and the soil is exposed, ready to receive the wildflower seeds. But I'm not gonna do the seeds next. The next thing I'm gonna do is lay the stepping stones along the back of the wildflower meadow. And there's several reasons why I want stepping stones through my wildflower meadow. The first one is I want to get access to it without damaging it. I want to be able to see it up close What's the point creating a beautiful wildflower meadow if you can't get into it? I want to get into it without doing it any damage. It'll also enable me to get to this hedge and trim it if I need to, again, without treading all over the wildflowers. I'm not just gonna lay these slabs directly onto the floor. I'm going to lay them on blocks so that they are slightly elevated off the ground. And that will give an extra little environment for wildlife because There'll be a little crack underneath each one. They'll be quite stable to stand on, but underneath there, all kinds of creatures, creepy crawlies and insects, newts, toads, frogs, will be able to go and hide and get safety. Now I think I've got nine of these to lay. That's my point of access. So I'm going to start at the far end and work back towards the camera. I'll see you in about 15 seconds.
So there we go. A great little path through what will become a beautiful wildflower meadow. And you've probably noticed I've bought a great big green truck and some sand and the seed. I'll tell you what that's for in a minute, if you haven't already guessed, but it's all about evenly distributing the seeds. I've got my hoe here. I can't get my rake in between these slabs. So I'm just gonna break up the earth. That will help the seeds make contact because it is quite compacted where I've taken up the weed fabric. So that's just going to give the seeds contact with earth which was a little bit compacted before now you may not think this path looks particularly wonderful at the moment and i wouldn't disagree but come back in a few weeks or a month and hopefully it will be engulfed in beautiful wildflowers which we're about to sow and no one repeating myself but i've elevated this on blocks so that wildlife can find a home underneath it but i've just realized there's an additional benefit to this slightly elevated path. Not only does it give me a wonderful aerial view of what's going to be a beautiful wildflower meadow, it also gives me a slightly elevated vantage point across the fields beyond. I'm hoping that's where a lot of my wildlife is going to come from. So now it's time to sow the seeds, cleared the ground, moved the gravel, lifted the weed fabric, put my stepping stone path in, and I bought these from Aldi, they were only £1.50. Am I gonna get £1.50's worth of value of this packet of seeds? Let me tell you what's in the box. Yarrow, pheasant's eye, red army, shrubby hare's ear, pot marigold, china aster, safflower, cornflower, chrysanthemum, cosmos, dragon's head, California poppy, gypsophilia, candy tuft, heavenly blue, stocks, four o'clock lily, common poppy, soapwort, catchflies, dill, borage, coriander, buckwheat, and basil. <sighs> Quite a selection, I think you'll agree, of wildflowers to go at. And it says it covers an, an area of up to 25 square metres, which is almost exactly what I've got here. Flowering time, early to late summer. So, now, this says it's a shake and rake seed shaker, which I think implies it basically just cut a hole in the top and shake it. But I'm not happy with that because I'm not confident that I'll get an even distribution of seeds if I do that which is why I bought this truck and some sand what I'm going to do basically is empty all the seeds into here add some sand to the mix and then mix it all together very very thoroughly and that will give me more volume of matter to spread over the earth and because it's sand and not seeds it should make it easier to sow and see after I've sown it then I will do what it says on the tin. I'll rake it in and I'll give it a good watering. You'll be able to come back in a few weeks and see what happens. And it's really quite exciting. So let's get to it. Let's mix these seeds with some sand. Let's sprinkle them on the earth. Let's rake them in. And let's give them a good watering. Of course, I could take a slightly more mathematical or scientific approach. I could divide this area up into metre squares and that would help me distribute it more evenly. I'm not going to do that today. It probably would be a sensible approach, but I'll just start off by sprinkling it on the ground and because I'll be able to see it, it'll give me a good idea. And then I will rake it in. So that 
pots of seed down mixed in with some sand I can see pretty clearly that it's virtually covered the whole of the space I can't really see which is seed and which is sand but nature will show me that in a few weeks hopefully I'm going to rake it in next I think raking it makes sure that it's got good contact with earth and it also stops it running off it was to rain quite heavily and I'm going to water it now as well so by washing it, I don't want to wash it all off, so by raking the top of the soil, it just breaks the surface and gets the seed into the earth. So the next job is raking, then I will water. And don't forget, I will be posting updates with links above this uh, video, and you'll be able to see how all this turns out. I find it remarkable and incredible that a small box of seeds might produce a beautiful wildflower meadow as big as this, but we will see. And if it does do well, trust me, I'll write to Aldi and say thank you. So there we go, one wildflower meadow and a wildlife path with crevices underneath it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do subscribe and hit the notifications bell, especially if you want to see the updates on how this turns out and comment below. All I've got to do now is water this in and then go and have a drink of water myself because I think I've earned it. And hopefully, see you soon.